For our next problem, we're going to be leaving behind the realm of divisibility and rational numbers and moving into something that involves real numbers. Just to showcase that there's lots of different things you could be proving. We just started with divisibility and rational numbers because those things are simple. But we could be proving any variety of things. I just don't want to force upon you 4 million definitions to make you be able to do basic proof techniques of applying definitions and then doing algebra. It's a very basic foundation of proofs to be able to do this. Divisibility, like I said, is one of the common places to start. But you could be doing lots of stuff. So here we're going to be dealing with real numbers. We're going to say if you have two real numbers that are one, not the same, two, both positive, then when you add those combination of fractions, it's greater than two. If you look at this direct proof, the way we did our first several proofs, doesn't look too promising, right? Because if my hypothesis is real vague, I look at that and I got nothing, right? I don't even know what I would do. I would say, let that thing be true. They're not equal, they're greater than zero, and then just kind of stare at it for a while, right? I have absolutely no clue how to prove this. So we need to do something different. You might be like me when I first recorded this video and say, we're gonna do this by contrapositive and then remind yourself that that's also not very helpful. And instead, we're going to try to do this by contradiction. To do a proof by contradiction, we're going to try to write down the negation of the original statement. So let's write down what the negation of that statement is. Remember that not P implies Q is P and not Q. So the, the opposite of this statement is that X doesn't equal Y, x greater than zero, y greater than zero, and that the inequality is false. So we're gonna do a proof by contradiction, just like with contrapositive, we want to let the reader know that we're doing this by contradiction. We do it by contradiction. The original statement was a for any real numbers, which means that the con the opposite of this would be that there exists real numbers such that they satisfy the hypotheses and don't satisfy the conclusion. So suppose there exists X and Y such that they satisfy all the hypotheses. X and Y are not the same x is greater than 0, and y is greater than 0, but the conclusion is false. So, but, when I look at that statement, but, when I look at that statement, it is false. So, x divided by y plus y divided by x is less than or equal to 2. And now I have something that I'm supposing is true. I have an inequality to work with that I can then do algebra on. The problem with the direct proof here was that there was no obvious getting your foot in the door moment. You didn't have an expression to work with. The same thing was true when we did a proof by contrapositive. So here, what we're going to do is we are going to try and work with that inequality using the facts that we know. So... I'm going to begin by multiplying by y and x in that expression. Why is that helpful to me? It's helpful to me because I know that they aren't equal and that they're positive. I'm allowed to multiply by positive numbers in an inequality without affecting the inequality. So I'm going to take that expression, x over y plus y over x, less than or equal to 2. I can multiply the whole thing. by x times y. Doing that makes it get rid of all those fractions, which can be tedious. So in the first fraction there, we get the y's cancel and I get x squared. In the second fraction, similar story, but the x's cancel and I get y squared. And the right hand side, I get 2xy. And now I'm going to subtract 2xy from both sides x squared plus y squared minus 2xy. And if you stare at that for long enough, you might realize, hold on, 
I can actually write this as a difference of squares on the left-hand side of my inequality. I can write that as x minus y quantity squared. When you multiply the firsts, you get x squared. When you multiply the middle terms, you get negative xy and negative yx, which combine to be negative 2xy. And then when you multiply negative y by negative y, you get y squared. So that thing is less than or equal to zero. However, it's a square, they're real numbers, and they're less than or equal to zero. That can't be true, because if they're not equal, they can't equal zero. And if they're real numbers, then this, this has to be either positive or negative. When you square a positive or negative number, you get a positive number. So, maybe I should add in here just to be safe that these were real numbers because that's a critical fact that I'm using. Had they been complex numbers, this result would no longer hold. And we see that since x does not equal y, x minus y is either greater than 0 or less than 0. The point is it's not equal to 0. So x minus y quantity squared must be greater than zero. And now we can see our contradiction. I have, using the facts I had available from the proof, that that one quantity is less than or equal to zero, and that exact same quantity is greater than zero. Something's got to be wrong here. The thing that's wrong was our initial hypothesis. Every step that we took was justified. The only thing here that was unjustified was the original hypothesis, that we assumed that the hypotheses were true, but the conclusion was false. So as a result of that, we know that the thing we started with must be true because we led to a contradiction, something that cannot possibly be true. So we know that this is a contradiction. This is, or sorry, I'm not gonna write, so I'm gonna write contradiction to indicate that there's something wonky going on here with the fact that it was greater than zero and less than or equal to zero. Therefore, the original statement must be true. Therefore, we know that the original quantity there, x divided by y plus y divided by x must be greater than two. You can also write this similar to what we did before with the result follows by contrapositive, or you could write the result follows by contradiction or something like that here. There's various ways you could finish this off, but you need to make sure that you tell someone that you're done with the proof, right? One way you can do that as well is to symbolize that. Some people draw like a double line at the end of their proof or a box or really any symbol. In LaTeX, the language I write all my notes in, you can customize that symbol, including things like the Batman symbol or other weird nonsense.